I feel like the most bleh. <laughs> I feel like for the most part I've been able to stay pretty strong. Um, but last week we had several days that were pretty emotional and just got some bad news with things. Um, Monday they did the bone marrow biopsy. On Tuesday um, I just started to notice that my hair was starting to fall out and so that was pretty emotional for me. On Wednesday we got the results of the bone marrow biopsy and this they said basically that the round of chemo treatment failed. And so we started another round of chemo right away. Um, I did a gestational diabetes test on Wednesday, also before they started the chemo, and got the results on Thursday. And they said that I had gestational diabetes, and so I would need to, they would need to be checking my blood sugar, and I would need to be watching my carb count, and um, taking insulin if needed. And unfortunately, with some of the medications that they've been giving me, that can be raising my blood sugar also. So even with um, trying to watch what I'm eating, um, it might not really do that much because of some of the medications that they're giving me. Um, and then also they're concerned about me losing weight, so it's trying to balance everything, which is really frustrating, making sure I'm eating enough, but making sure I'm not eating enough carbs. So, or not making sure I'm not eating too many carbs so that um, I'm not needing to get insulin. Um, so those were three days back to back that were pretty emotional and challenging. I had been trying to wait till the very last possible moment to, um, to just shave my hair because I wanted to keep it. And um, so I went several days with just a lot of it coming out and then finally on Saturday I uh, was going to take a shower and just there was so much hair coming out that we decided um, it was time to go ahead and shave it and so Josh helped me and that was pretty emotional. I feel a little better now that my hair has been shaved but it was just kind of rough. I guess the mental process of it. When I was first told that I would probably lose my hair by some of the nurses, you know, they were saying how it's really emotional for people because they just feel like it's like a big identifier that you have cancer. And I really didn't think that it would bother me that much. But then as my hair started to come out and then it's needing to make the decision to go ahead and shave it, and I really identified with that because I already feel like I'm walking around with the IV stand, I have my mask on, I'm pregnant, now I don't have any hair and you know you just, people just kind of look at you a second longer. I think some of the news that we had last week just really tested us and and did kind of shake us up a little bit. But I think after we had some time to just cry and just process it, then we were right back up, you know, standing strong how we have been. And so um, I think for the most part, we haven't been shaken. Um, there's definitely been things that um, have have threatened that, but I think that, um, you know, we just kind of need a little bit of time and then, and then we're okay. And we're just continuing to believe, continuing to worship God, continuing to press in and just, um, just fight. I think it'd be so easy in this situation to just spiral downward and we just have to have hope. There's a quote that um, from Eric Johnson from Bethel Church, and he said, we have to be a people who have so much hope it's ridiculous. And I just wanna have that kind of hope. And I think that a lot of the staff at the hospital, they see that in us. They see how we're so positive about the situation and they really don't understand it. 
but it's what's keeping us going, having that hope. And that's just what we have to cling to. I mean, the alternative is, is to just pity, <laughs> pity myself and just hate the situation that I'm in and that would make things miserable. And so I choose to have hope and I choose to have a good attitude and I choose to fight.